of the Lord is our strength, and we are so glad that you're spending next 30 minutes with us here on Hope Today. I'm here with Amy. Tom is off today, and we are just so excited because we love to spend this time with you just to uplift your spirit no matter what you're going through. We're here for you, and God is there for you too. Amy, tell us what's coming up today. We are here for you, and I'll tell you what, the devil's been at work stealing joy. Has he robbed you of your joy? Has he ripped you off this year, this week? It's time to get our joy back. Like Sydney said, the joy of the the Lord is our strength. Our very special guest, Gina L. Smith, is here. And we're going to talk about her, her book, Everyday Prayers for Joy. Now, Sydney, if I had to pick like a topic, a subject that is what I would say my wheelhouse, it is the subject of joy. I think it is so important. And joy isn't just giggly, happy feelings. Joy is actually a deep, rich fruit of the spirit. Yeah, it's definitely a state of being and where we have to be and just keeping our mind on Jesus. So we're so excited for that because you know it, no matter what you're going through and what you're walking through, we just want you to experience the joy of Jesus. But right now we're gonna bring a little joy into your living room because it's time for Stump the Host. Okay, Amy, so this one, this, where the ladies are here. So name five mothers in the Bible. Eve, Ruth, Naomi, uh, Mary, Elizabeth. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. We named all five. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> that was yes, a, that was a good easy. one. Yes, easy. Easy one. Okay, next one. Jacobin. <laughs> so it's Eve, Sarah. So they, there's a bunch of them that they, can we scroll back? We can read all the names okay, of the mothers yeah. in the Bible. So we have Eve, there's Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Jacobin, Naomi, Hannah, Bathsheba, Abijah, Azuba, Jedediah, Elizabeth, Mary, Mary Eunice, Eunice, and Lois. Lois. So, there we go. Yay. <laughs> All righty, so here's our next one. Amy, you got it. Okay. Who said this? Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Joel. Because this is it, 220 something? Yay! Yeah. Yay, yay, yay. So, Which is also referenced in Acts. So, awesome. yay! So, Joel 228. So, we like it. We did it. They cannot stump us. Yes, we're doing good today. So, you know, we always like to have a scripture to go along the theme of our show. And today it comes from James 1, verses 2 through 4, and it says this. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Amy, thoughts? You, you know, for every believer, this scripture, like you have to know it and you have to um, really take it, take it seriously because um, it's going to rain on the just and the unjust and life is going to happen. There's going to be great days. There's going to be trauma days. There's going to be, you know, happy, elated days. There's going to be days of sorrow and sadness. But what Paul is teaching the church now, can you imagine the believers that he's writing this to? They're probably persecuted. They're probably oppressed. They're probably, their voices are being shut down. It's a hard time. Christians are being murdered. And he says this, you know, count it all joy, my brothers, when you fall into various trials. And here's the thing about this scripture. You can't just take one little piece of it out of context. You've got to read the whole Thing because it, this, this joy, this counting it all joy when I fall into various trials and situations is working something in me. So Sydney, I can be like, if, if I were struggling with a, a disease, a sickness and illness today, I would say, you know what, Father, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus name that the healing power of God is working in my body right now. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Lord, depression has to go and I count it all joy as I'm walking through this. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil. Yeah. I will come out of this and God is at work in me. So I count it all joy. <laughs> you know, Amy, just as you were talking, I just know somebody's watching right now and you've just been battling thoughts with your mind and I know I go through this too. It's like the depression and this downcast feeling and doubting yourself and right now in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now for that person that is dealing with those thoughts, that person that isn't feeling any joy, that pe person who wants to give up and feel so hopeless right now, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you come into their living room. I pray right now you come into the hospital room. I pray right now you come into the jail cell, wherever they are watching from, that you would just break that off mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. And if you need any encouragement today, because we know in the world right now, we don't want to make light of situations that people are going 
going through that there's a lot of heaviness, there's a lot of burdens, there's a lot of fear. We are always here for you. So give us a call on our prayer line at 888-665-4483. And I just want to encourage you something when I am just feeling so downcast, when I'm feeling down, when I feel like I'm getting robbed of my joy, I just go sometimes and on my knees and I just cry out to Jesus. I just lay it on his feet. I'm like, God, I'm dealing with this. God, I'm dealing with this. It's, it's so, I feel so burdened and bogged down, but I know that you're with me and I start lifting up my hands and I just feel like it's a sign of surrender. I'm like, here I am, Jesus. So I just encourage you today, if you're not feeling that joy, if you're kind of like, you're feeling a little depleted and your, your balloon's kind of like, blah, 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 just, I just encourage you to get into the presence of the Lord, read his word, meditate, and remember the promises and the purposes that he's spoken over your life. It's all about our minds, Amy. It's just when we fix our mind on Jesus, ooh, it changes things around. It does. And I have a simple question for everyone watching. Who out there wants to experience more joy in their lives? Hopefully everyone, every hand went up because that's exactly what our next guest is going to talk about. Gina L. Smith is a podcaster, a prayer mentor and author. She has a new book out called Everyday Prayers for Joy. And she joins us now to share how we can find true biblical joy in our lives. Gina, welcome to Hope Today. Hi, thank you. I'm encouraged just listening to you guys talk now. I don't even think you need me. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, give us your um, thoughts on that scripture. My brothers, my sisters, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and situations. Well, I think uh, it's easy to focus on the first part where it says count it all joy. And I don't know about you, but if I'm going through a hard time, and I see those words count it all joy, my first thought is, okay, how am I supposed to do that, you know? Uh, but I, I feel like the end of the verse where it says, uh, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing, that's where our hope lies, right? That we are being perfected, that we are, he is maturing us so that we are lacking in nothing. And I that's kind of amazing to think about, isn't it? To think we'd be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So that, that's what can give us the hope, the peace, and the joy that we need to get through the times that are difficult. Gina, can you define joy? Sure. Um, it is focusing on the giver of all good things rather than on the good things. They get, well, sometimes people think joy is just a feeling or it's, you know, just something out there, euphoria, but joy is actually, you know, a fruit of the spirit. Yeah, yeah, it is. And so what I mean by focusing on the giver of is that obviously when we're focusing on the giver, uh, we're taking ours off our circumstances, right? getting into the word and focusing on God, his promises, and he is working him, his truths and his re, himself into us. And so it becomes a fruit, not a feeling. It becomes a fruit. It becomes a, our, uh, I think you said, Sydney, in the beginning, it's a, a sense that we have or a, you know, a, not a feeling, but it's just kind of a, a, a sense of who we are because we have our hope that's been put in God and his word and his promises rather than on our circumstances and even the blessings that he gives us. And it's so important that we keep our eyes fixated on him because, you know, sometimes it is hard to have joy in our lives and it's just something to cultivate. And it's like a daily practice, too, of just, you know, surrendering to God and listening to him no matter what is shifting and shaking around us. And Jean, I just want to ask you, you know, a little bit about your personal story of how did you find joy in your life? Well, I, I got to a point several years ago, my family and I had been going through some uh, significant losses and some life changes, some just normal life changes, you know, but change can be hard, right? Um, and I just started to crash in emotionally, just with depression and, and I, I came out of my bedroom one night. I couldn't sleep. I walked into my living room and the only lights that were on in the living room was one of those um, plaques that say joy, but it was lit, you know, and I had left it on. 
um, that night and I laid on my couch, curled up in a blanket and I thought, Lord, I am not experiencing biblical joy. This should not be the way that I am living, you know, if I truly know you. And so that started this journey of getting into the word, seeing what it says about biblical joy, about what God says. And then he's, and I'm still in the process of learning just how to take my eyes off of the difficulties, the things that are going on around us. Um, and taking my thoughts. I used to teach my children uh, when we went over the verses about bringing thoughts captive, I would say kind of like turning the channel, right? <laughs> so turn the channel, uh, focus on something else. And my focus began to be God, God and his word, his promises, his promises for eternity, but also his promises for every day, day by day, minute by minute. And so it's just been, that's been about, eight years when that began. And then the Lord allowed me to write about it, which is an amazing <laughs> fruit <laughs> that came out of that hard time. So yeah, that's my journey. And that is like so many other people's journeys. You know, we need to find that true biblical joy in times that we don't understand and seasons that you feel kind of, you know, sad and lonely and, and just kind of weird and out of it. You talk about um, in two of your devotionals, finding joy in our living hope and in the God of hope. We're pretty crazy about hope around here. Can you explain? Well, joy and hope, I would say, are very closely intertwined, don't you think? Because our the joy comes when we put our hope in God's promises, in what He, in what He tells us about the future, and eternity. But He's a living hope. He's our living hope because while we're living and going through this life. Um, we can cling to him because he's the only thing in this life that doesn't change and he's living and his word is living and active and it gives us everything we need for life and godliness. So it's the hope that we have one day at a time and then for the future uh, or in eternity. And so it's basically taking a bird's eye view of our life, right? And having a perspective a godly perspective on what's going on around here in our daily lives. Can we talk about one of your devotionals that really hit home for me as a pastor? And that is, you know, finding and walking in joy when you're going through betrayal. Betrayal. Wow, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, well, again, it's just turning the channel, right? It's learning to take our eyes off of the circumstances and onto God who will never betray us. But I think that it's important to um, learn about the prayer of lament. And I have a little section in, um, in the, the prayer journal that explains the prayer of lament. And I've simplified it into three steps of how to pray that. And the first part of it is that it's okay to complain, to pour out your heart to God, tell him how you feel. Um, I, I guess our culture would call it venting. What turns it from venting to lamenting is that you eventually have to take that vent session or the pouring out your heart. If you read the prayer of lament, any of them in the Bible, it's I've been betrayed. I've been left alone. You have left me. Why is this taking so long? Why aren't you hearing me? Why aren't you, you know, just really pouring out your heart. But then eventually we have to get to the point where we take our focus off of the hurt, put it on to God and take time to go down, as my husband and I call it, go down memory lane. <laughs> you know, remember God's faithfulness in, in the past. There are times I have had to literally just sit down in my chair in my office and mentally go all the way back to my childhood and remember all the ways God has been faithful and just every little thing that God has done in my life. Thank you for being faithful. 
what that does is it fills you with hope and then helps you to look to the future and say, God, thank you. I trust you that you're going to be faithful, even in this betrayal, right? Just that God will correct it either in this lifetime or in the next. He, he is enough and he will uh, give you hope and encouragement and joy even in times of betrayal. That's so good, Gina. Are you, are you concerned about how we're trying to find joy in this culture today? Oh, for sure. <laughs> because you really can't find joy. If you, I think there's a lot of promises in, you know, me, the media, uh, commercials, uh, everything. You, time you look around, you see there's going to be joy in what traveling, um, being living your best life. Right. And we all know, you know, I know our best life is not here on this earth. It's going to be in heaven. Right. This. So. Our culture wants to tell us and honestly, it's the battle that we're in. Right. This constant daily battle that we're in that our focus beyond the things of this world that promise to bring us joy rather than the only thing that can give us true biblical joy, and that's God and, and focusing and depending on and trusting in him and his word. Joy C.S. Lewis said that, or, or Gina, C.S. Lewis said, joy is the serious business of heaven. Do you think joy is a serious thing? And as believers, we should be taking it more seriously than we are. Oh, for sure. Because, and I know for it in my own life, but I'm not feeling, feeling, you know, sensing, experiencing biblical joy. It's my own fault. You know, it's because I haven't been like I should be. It's because I'm focusing on things that will not bring me true joy. And then I start feeling insecure, overwhelmed, or, you know, not enough, or whatever it is that you start to feel when you're focusing on things of this world. Um, as soon as I get into the word and start learning about who God is, his character, his promises, then I'm filled back up with biblical joy uh, because that's the only thing that's stable, right? I mean, there's really nothing else that's stable in this world. So true, Gina. The joy of the Lord truly is our strength. And you've written this book at the end of each a daily devotional to think to pray and to praise. You even have a little to-do list that, you know, while we're praying to do things are coming to our mind, a little prayer list. What a great book and what a great reminder to get our joy back. Thank you so much, Gina. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Wow. And you know, Sydney, um, one of the scriptures that she has in her book, which I think is so, you know, relevant to today, and that's in Proverbs 10, 28, the hope of the righteous brings joy. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're, our hope is not limited to that which is temporary and that which we see. Our hope is linked to something eternal and our hope is linked to something of faith. Yeah, it's so important that we have Jesus, that he's in the center of our being, in the center of our all, that we look to him. And you know, Amy, something that like, just even hearing about the way the state of our culture is and just what's going on in the world, is just like, I, like we, our heart should break the way that we see the world is living and how people aren't experiencing joy. It should break our hearts when we hear about people taking their lives and people feeling that down in the dumps. And we have the secret. We have, we know what brings us the ultimate joy and the ultimate joy is in Jesus. And I even think about, you know, being a millennial, and I know there's a lot of things that's like my purpose and my calling, but it's just like in order to find, you can have all the money in the world. We see this all the time. Like, oh, these people, like they have all this money, all these things, all these position, possessions. They think they're on top of the world, but they lack joy because you know what? Joy can't be pot. Joy is a person and that joy is in Jesus and in him alone. And one thing I'm just finding, Amy, in my own life is just surrendering it all, giving my life to him, losing my life and what the world says my life should be like. That's when I feel the true essence and the true joy in my heart and my life. It's a good reminder that we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, right? Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look forth in his wonderful face because like 
things down here, they st they're trying to steal your joy, relational issues, you know, social media posts and, and some, a comment that was made or something happened. It's just like so many things are trying to just pull you down. There was a diagnosis. There was, there, there, bad news came, something tight with the finances, but guess what? You got to dig down deep to where that fruit is. You don't need patience when you're just, you can be patient. You need patience when you're walking through something and you need that fruit uh, to come forth in your life. Same with joy. You know, it's easy to have joy when you're at a celebration, you're at a party, and it's like, yay. It's all. When you really need joy is when you're, you're walking through something heavy, something hard, yeah. and then that deep fruit of joy bursts forth, and it comes from deep within, and it comes from the Holy Spirit, and it has nothing to do with you. You've just got to tap into it because Sydney that's where our strength is that's where our power is and that's how we're going to overcome yeah and I just think of that scripture you know in the presence of the joys in the presence the fullness of what how is the fullness of joy is in the presence of the Lord did I get it right in Psalms yes <laughs> it's something like that but it's just like I've experienced yeah. it where it's like I have been going through the hardest moments of my life and once I'm in the presence of God once I'm on my knees if I'm playing some worship music or I'm singing my own little song and I just lift up my hands to Adonai and I tell God I know it looks crazy. It may look like I am surrounded, but I am surrounded by you. And when you cry out to him, it's amazing that peace that you feel, that stillness that you feel in your heart. I'm still, I sink into knowing who he is in the midst of the circumstance. And I even feel, Amy, and just for all of us today, we see how the world is getting darker. We see how things are shaking. We see how things are shifting, but it is so important for us to hold on to Jesus. And no matter what is coming our way, we stand on the promises, we declare and decree the promises and of his word and you will just start things breaking and things shifting because I'm even seeing it in my own life today. Well, and, and it's a, you've got to take responsibility. Yeah. You can't just be tossed to and fro. You can't just say, I'm going to let all, like you're the gateway. You're the keeper of your home and your heart and your life. So I'm going to let joy in. I'm going to let love in. I'm going to let hope in. I'm going to let faith in. I'm going to let peace in. And I'm going to push back on fear and torment and trauma and oppression and depression. Let's get back to joy. Let's get back to joy because with him, we win. Well, we are so glad that you tuned into Hope today. And you know what? We want to end on a special note because we have an incredible music video. It's for King and Country. The song is called Joy. So start dancing and start worshiping because it's time to have joy all through your home. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's lead story once again is Megastorm Hercules. Yes, and though it seems to be settling over the entirety of the continental United States of America, there is some good news. It is the is storm of the century. It has utterly paralyzed our nation. On a brighter note, uh, people are really... It's already claimed the dubious title of the worst hero. of all time. Thank you for that, Nancy. Why don't we take a look at the weather? Lately I've been reeling, watching the nightly news Don't seem to find the rhythm, just wanna sing the blues Feels like a song that never stops Choose. 
On a brighter note, while our circumstances haven't changed, I guess our perspective can. Right, Randy? Couldn't have said it better myself. This is Channel 13, Nancy and Randy. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn to pursue the presence of God with more passion than ever before. Revival historian and author Jennifer A. Miskoff shares about the significance of fasting and how it can ignite your hunger for God. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.